Man, it smells amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get a pot heated up. Okay, so we're actually gonna heat this one like a medium low heat here, cause we're gonna be making a roux. And over in this large stock pot, I have five quarts of water. We will be making a homemade stock. As far as this large saute pan right here, just leave it there for now. We'll get to it soon. As for the water, we gotta get that heated up too. Get it on a high heat. Now over at our prepping area, we got some vegetables. So we're gonna start with our vegetables for the stock. We have one yellow onion, two sticks of celery, and three carrots. And we're just gonna cut these up into some larger pieces. And there you go. So let's go ahead and get this into our stock pot. Beautiful. All right, so before we get cracking on these vegetables, over here we have two whole raw chickens. Now mine are a little big. You probably wanna get some smaller ones, but I'm gonna make it work. We're gonna add these to our stock pot. There's one. Here's the other one. There you go. We're gonna push that down in there. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that. So just to let you guys know, this is a 10 quart stock pot here. As you can see, I'm cutting it pretty close, so I wouldn't use anything less than this. At this time, we're trying to bring the water to a boil, and uh, before we do, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of seasoning to this. We're adding two tablespoons of salt. And you might think that's a lot, but this is a lot of water, so just gotta get it flavored up. Just get it all around. And one tablespoon of garlic powder. There you go. We're just gonna let this come to a boil. So look, once you come into a boil, if you start to see some foaming like this, you can go ahead and scoop that out of there. Just go ahead and get it out. Just some impurities, you know, that will help make this a cleaner broth here, or stock, I should say. <laughs> it's a stock when there's bones involved. In case you didn't know, I'm just gonna get this out of here. There we go. It is time to get crack a lacking. Paya! Boy, you make sure you discard these right here. Nobody wants that in the gumbo. Okay, so we're gonna get this into a container off on the side until we need it. But for now, we're gonna take the ends of these green onions and we're gonna throw them in the stock. Get those up in there. Huh, we'll push them down. Okay, so now that we have this boiling, we're gonna cover it up and lower our fire to a simmering heat. We're gonna let this simmer for one hour. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Getting over to our big pot, we're getting started on a roux. First, you will add one and one third cup of vegetable oil. Next, you will stir in two cups of all purpose flour. You're gonna get stirring quickly. So we started out on a lower heat because we don't want this thing burning to the bottom of our pot here. It will be kind of a pasty mixture like this in the beginning for probably a good 15 minutes and then it'll start to smooth out. And then from there, we can slowly increase our heat so that we can get the color we want a little quicker. But overall, it just tastes better when you go low and slow. That's just my opinion. You guys don't have to hold me to it. You like a quick roux, do it quick. So I've been stirring for about six minutes here and you can see it's still clumpy. I mean, in the beginning, if you're seeing this and you're freaking out, don't worry. It's going to smooth out. Trust me. You just kind of have to keep stirring. And you're gonna let it occasionally sit here and there. And when you do, you can see it'll smooth out just sitting there. But you know, you let it sit too long and then that heat will take over on the bottom there. So it's good to keep it moving. All right, guys, we have been stirring for about 15 minutes now. 
And as you can see, we have a much smoother texture here. So we just keep on with the process and everything should come along beautifully. The color hasn't really changed much, but it will. Trust me. Just keep stirring. Now look, if you get tired, you just kind of let it sit there for a little bit, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so, catch your breath, and then you get back at it like that. <laughs> All right, we got a great color coming here, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty much a peanut butter looking color. Obviously want to get this thing to a nice chocolate color, almost a dark chocolate color. I've lowered my fire here because I want to just let this sit a little bit because I'm about to drain this stock over here. Well, I say drain, but I'm going to pour it through a sifter, you know, keep the remains and try to separate all the things that are floating around up in here. But here we go. So first things first, we're going to pull these chickens out. All right, here we go. Oh, whoo, boy, it's already falling apart. All right, calm down, guys, calm down. Oh, no. Ugh. Whew. Always one of them got to give me a hard time. All right, we're going to let this chicken just chill out for a little bit. Because if we go touching it too quick, we're going to burn our fingers off. For now, we're going to take this stock and run it through a sifter. Here we go. I may need to put that in another bowl just to be safe here. Let's get the rest of it. There you go. Now look, if you want to keep these little remains right here and chop them up and add them to your gumbo, feel free. Um, personally, I like to just snack on the carrots, you know, as I'm cooking. They're tasty and Celery as well. It's all good stuff here. Healthy too. So the choice is yours. All right, I've since brought my saute pan back into the picture here. And it is heating up on, I would say, a medium heat. Let that get hot. Now back over at our roux, it's been sitting for a little bit. But as you can see, it's fine. When you put it down at the lowest setting and let it get there too. You don't just lower your heat and walk away from a cast iron pot, but you let it get there for a few minutes, you can let the roux sit, it'll be fine. Just make sure you come back and kind of touch it every couple minutes or so while you're handling the stock. But at this point, we're gonna get our fire heated back up because uh, we need to get this thing moving. You know what I'm saying? Okay guys, I'm babying this roux over here, but I'm gonna go back and forth between this pot and this sausage over here because I need to get it cut up. I probably should have done this in the beginning and had it prepped, but you know, I was just moving along with the video, so stuff happens, but you guys get the idea. And there you go. Okay, so we still stir in the roux. We have not left this thing alone very much. We've just been going back and forth. But to this pan over here, I will add a small amount of cooking oil here just to get this pan coated, so that way I don't drop the sausage in and it sticks so much to the bottom. It's gonna help out a little bit, trust me. And drop our sausage in. There we go. Let it move around. See, look at that, anything in the bottom's coming up good. I'm just gonna sear this up real good. And we're gonna work our way between this pan and this pot over here. So that way nothing burns. Stay tuned. All right, so I still got my sausage searing, but uh, I wanted to let you guys know that with this stock right here, I do like to try to get the top layer a little bit. You can see that, that fat, really. Get that out of there and just put in a bowl off on the side. You know, that kind of helps your stock here be not so much of a fatty stock. So just skim it like that and it'll be all right. All right, our sausage has seared up nicely, and uh, don't worry about none of that. We're going to get that up in just a moment here, but for now, we're going to start removing this sausage and putting it in a bowl off on the side. All right, let's take our chopped vegetables and throw them in. 
Scoop out what you can. Okay, so your vegetables are gonna pull up what's on the bottom here, and as you can see, it's just a dark browning. But look, if it's stuck too much, you just add a little bit of cold water, and that'll help break it up. Look at that, see, look at that right there. Bam. It's just gonna help brown your vegetables really good. All right, guys, remember when you're doing this, do not forget to go back and forth between stirring your vegetables and stirring your roux, all right? Because uh, this bad boy here can burn easily. But you can always lower your fire too, you know, control your heat so that you can handle both of them at the same time. All right, I've been sauteing this up now for about 20 minutes. So at this point, we are gonna add a little bit of our chicken stock to the pan here so that way we can Kind of break up some other things at the bottom and there we go. Get a nice sear going here. There we go. Look at that. Breaking it up. Looks good. All right. We're going to add a little bit more here. We're just going to maintain kind of a smother of these onions and bell pepper, celery, the holy trinity. Will you? Oh, there we go. Looking good. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cover this up. We're gonna let that sit on a simmering heat. Meanwhile, we will keep stirring this roux, which as you can see has a beautiful chocolate fudge looking color here. But uh, you know, we, we want to get it kind of a, almost, you know, darker, dark chocolate, just a little bit darker, but it's looking really good. I'll tell you that much. All right, guys, this looks Fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and take our little smothered vegetables over here and dump this in and hope that we don't set a fire. Ooh. We're gonna have to scoop that. It gets really hot when you do this, guys, so maybe uh, have yourself a oven mitt on hand. All right, so we're gonna be adding the stock to this gradually. Let's go. Look how dark that is. That is beautiful. All right, here we go. Get that in there and turn it around. Get all this stuff up from the bottom. It's going to help us get a nice smooth consistency here. While my kids make a ton of noise in the background. <laughs> All right, we're looking good here, guys. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and dump all of it in. Just get all the rest of it in there. It's gonna lighten up the color, but it's gonna cook down again and that color will come back. So hopefully my spoon don't fall in there. And there we go. Oh, goodness gracious, it was so close. Yo, I feel good. Not really, I just burned my fingers. All righty then. As you can see, we got that nice soup-like consistency. Look, many of you guys out there like a thicker gumbo. Hey, do your thing, all right? You can do less stock. The beauty of doing it like this is you just keep gradually, gradually adding in what works for you and you can get the consistency you like. Now, me personally, gumbo has always had a soup-like consistency and that's the way I like it because then I know the difference between gumbo and stew. You know what I'm saying? Some of you guys out there, y'all feel me on that. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add our sausage to this. Oof, make a mess. There we go. Oh, there we got all of it. Next, we add one tablespoon of your favorite Cajun or Creole seasoning. And we blend that in. Next, one half tablespoon of salt. And look, some of you guys are gonna think, well, doesn't the Cajun or Creole seasoning have salt in it? It does, but it also has a blend of spices in it. So if you keep adding more Cajun Creole seasoning, you may make your gumbo a little too spicy for some of your guests. And this route we're taking we're just adding more flavor without the spice. So it should work out pretty good. And we'll add one half tablespoon of garlic powder. Now I know they have the salt and garlic powder in the stock itself, but that was a lot of water. So 
we're just adding a little bit more of the flavor profile to the gumbo now that it's going to cook down. At this point, we will raise our fire to a high heat. I'm going to bring this thing to a boil. And we will add three bay leaves. So while that's heating up, back over my cutting board, I've got a handful of fresh parsley. And I'm going to chop this up. And there you go. Let's get it in the pot. Bam! I'm blend that in there. It's looking good, smelling amazing, I tell you that much. And we have liftoff, ladies and gentlemen. So go ahead and cover that up. Lower your fire to a simmering heat and let that cook for two hours. Okay, so back to the chicken. The chicken has completely cooled off. We're going to pull it apart now, leaving the skin and bones in this tray right here and just putting the chicken in this bowl off on the side, maybe moving it to the fridge until we add it to the gumbo. I'm not gonna bore you to death with me pulling this apart, so let's just get this done real quick. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna cover this up and move it to the refrigerator until I'm ready to throw it in the gumbo. The two hours is up, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, that is beautiful. Let's stir this around. That all blended in really good. Man, that looks good. All right, we're gonna add our chicken in and hope that we don't make a mess here. There we go. All right, stir that around. Man, this smells amazing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and raise the fire up here just to get a slight boil. All right, once you have achieved this, go ahead and cover it back up. Lower to simmer and let it cook for 30 more minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our time is up. So we got one last thing we do here. We turn our fire off. And we add a cold bottle of water. I know some of y'all are cringing at this. But trust me, that's my thing. Stir that around. So like I've said in other videos, it's just something I did a long time ago. I felt like my seasoning was a little high one time. So I said, let me add some water. I grabbed a cold bottle of water, and for some reason, that made the best gumbo I ever had. Hey, call it science, shocking the gumbo, whatever, but it worked. So, with that being said, I think it's time we bowl up. Yeah. All right, y'all, let's do a little run through. I'm gonna start it off humming. How the ultimate vibe. I can't go in that big. Uh, man, this smells amazing. Uh, you know, I've done gumbo a few times now, um, but many of you guys have asked for a gumbo with a homemade stock. Well, here we are. Now look, I already know, I'm gonna get hit with the criticism. There's no okra, therefore it cannot be gumbo. Well listen, I've dug deep into the definition of gumbo, I understand, there is a meaning of the word that states okra. However, clearly this does not look like okra. So if you dive further into the word, you will find that it does mean a soup-like dish in Cajun Creole cuisine that has some spice and some meat and is often thickened with rice or okra. Nonetheless, personally, I think okra is best served in a seafood gumbo rather than chicken and sausage. But you do you. I'm not gonna throw you to the fire. Add your okra, leave it out, it's all good with me. Furthermore, if you like filet, all right, I say leave it on the side as a condiment, let people add it to their bowl because it's one of them things that can be a little powerful. 
Personally, I don't care for it. You do you. All right. Now that we have got that out the way, let's take a bite. Man, the color is really good and I love the consistency. Smells good. I like just a little bit of rice in my gumbo. I love that, that taste of the gumbo broth, I guess you would call it. Oh, man. I will forever say, it is such a unique flavor. I'm sorry, I don't mean to spit food at you guys. Oh, man. If you ever have the luxury of eating gumbo like this, you will just taste a whirlwind of flavor. It is unbelievable how it just all comes together. Mm. You've got this good, rich flavor from the stock. The, the, the roux gives it that kind of nutty background of a flavor in there, that almost like a hint of kind of a smokiness. The smoked sausage, it's really crazy. I always suggest go with your favorite brand of smoked sausage because that will like bring in this, you know, colorful aroma of smoked sausage into the, the gumbo. And it's just, mmm, so good. The chicken is good, cooked really well because it's cooked on the bone in the water. Oh man, all those vegetables, you know, when they're cooked down, you get, you know, their, their authentic flavor profile. This is solid. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we have knocked out chicken and sausage gumbo with the homemade stock for a crowd. Now, just so you know, if you've made it this part of the video, this pot is a 13 quart pot. So you want a big pot if you're making it like you saw here today. Um, obviously, if you're serving a lot of people, you definitely want a big pot. Furthermore, I know you guys are gonna ask, where's the potato salad? Let me tell you, when you take the time to video something of this magnitude and cook it this way, it's very hard to do it all, <laughs> you know? I like potato salad too, but to fill that into the gaps of having to video and do all this, is, it's just tough. But once again, you do you. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Paya!